saturate this atmosphere with God's goodness and his mercy? Can you saturate this place with his awesome excellence? Can you saturate this place for God is an omnipotent God? He is the present help in time of trouble. He is the Rose of Sharon. He is the great I am. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And because he is all of those things, we should be able to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, for this is holy ground. And if you believe that this is holy ground, come on and make your mind conducive to what God is getting ready to blow your mind about. How he's changing your family, how he's changing your children, how he's changing your husband, he's changing your wife, how he's healing your body, how he's making a way out of no way wherever you are in this location or even at home. Can you lift up a sound wherever you may be and just tell God how much you glorify him, how much you thank him, how much he is excellent, how much he is the sovereign God, how much he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords and he is the great I am and he is El Shaddai and he is a wheel in the middle of the wheel and he is Rapha and he is Alpha and he is the Prince of Peace and he is the King of Kings and he is your way maker, he is your deliverer, he is your keeper, he is your midnight cry, he is your hug when you feel lonely, he is your financial breakthrough, he is your relationship expert he is the king of kings he is the mighty god he is the excellent father he is jesus he is jehovah jireh he is jehovah nishi he is jehovah sikanua he is god all by himself and if i got some believers in here that will help me set this atmosphere even in your homes where you might be if you would saturate this atmosphere and ask God to do something that will blow your mind. Remove everything around you. Remove the things that you did last night. Remove the things that blocked you this morning. But I want to elify God. I want to edify God. I want to magnificent God. I want the awesome God. I want the Prince of Peace. I want the mighty God. I want the everlasting Father to reign in this place. So God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, God, thanking you, God, for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you, God, for being a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Thank you, God, for being the Rose of Sharon, for being the great I am, for being the excellent God. Now, God, move on our behalf, God. Now, God, you sit up high and you look down low. And God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare and we decree that whatever it is that we need from you today, God, we're pulling on your anointing. God, we're pulling on your power. God, we're pulling on your grace. God, God, we're pulling on your mercy. God, we're pulling on your anointing. God, we're pulling on your breakthrough. God, we're pulling on your deliverance. God, we're pulling on your healing. God, we're pulling on your mind, God. We're pulling on your limbs, God. Telling you, God, we heal, we healed. We need you, God. There's nobody like you, God. There's nobody greater than you, God. There's nobody excellent like you, God. So, God, in the name of Jesus, shift on every hour. Move every selfish spirit out of the way, God. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, that God that you will rest on every individual in this place God I bind up the name of Jesus I bind up the adversary in the name of Jesus every hindering spirit every quiet spirit every lazy spirit every spirit that's not of God we cease and desist it right now in the name of Jesus but God we pull on your glory God we pull on your grace God we pull on your mercy come on musicians God we pull on your everlasting father God we pull on on your Prince of Peace. God, we pull on the Great I Am. God, we pull on the El Shaddai. God, we pull on the wheel in the middle of a wheel. God, run up and down these rows. God, run up and down these pews. God, run up and down every person. In the name of Jesus, I break up everything that's not like God. I break up every yoke. I break up every bondage. I break up every confused spirit. I break up every sad spirit. I break up every spirit that's not pleasing in the will of God. But God, we push to the higher calling. God, we push to the higher calling. God, send down your angels. Send down your mercy. Send down your grace. Send down your glory. Send down your power. Send down your power. For this is holy ground. 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 So with holy ground comes anointing. With holy ground comes breakthrough. With holy ground comes gracious, precious God. In the name of Jesus, with the holy ground, we get 
glory from you, Lord. With holy ground, we see healing take places. Miracle signs and wonders a sound in this atmosphere that the devil is scared of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because together we stand. Divided we fall. And God, we lift you up. God, we glorify you. God, we magnify you. God, we exalt you. God, we glorify you. You are the great I am. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the El Shaddai. You are the wheel in the middle of the wheel. You are my keeper. You are my sustainer. You are my shepherd. You are my glory. You are my healer. You are my deliverer. You are my way maker. You are my God in light. You are the master. You are the savior. You are the king. You are the El Shaddai. And we give you glory. God, we give you glory today. For that, God, we say thank you. Right where you are, can't you just say thank you? Because you are my glory. You are my healer. You are my deliverer. You are my keeper. Come on, praise team, make your way forward. You are everything to me. Look at somebody say, you are everything to me. And that's why I got to give you praise. Right where you are in the posture of worship, can you lift up holy hands? Come on, lift up holy hands. Those that are sitting before me, you should have a closed mouth. Because God has been too good to you. We just celebrated Thanksgiving and you still got life, health, and strength. So you got to give God the best praise that you can give him. Because he is truly worthy to be praised. When I woke up this morning, I didn't have a doubt that the Lord, He would bring me out. And Kingdom Nation, if I'm in the right church, in the right place, at the right time, I need you to open up your mouth and declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I need you to shake this atmosphere, conducive to what it needs to be. And I need you to move some mountains. I need you to make some paths straight. I need you to make your family change. Make your husband change. Make your wife change. Through the power of God that God is giving you, you ought to give him glory. You ought to give I feel, I feel y'all now. I feel you. I feel you. Somebody needed that push. Look at somebody say, for the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm shifting some situations with the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm changing some things by the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When I look at that situation again, it's not going to look the same in the land of the living because God wants me to live, 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 live. And because I'm living, I believe, I believe that I can make it through this situation. Because God, you are truly worth to be praised. I love to worship him. If you could, just lift up your hand. See, when you worship God, you got to forget about everything else that you talked about last night, talked about this morning. It's hard for you to push through junk when you don't have a clear mind. Can't push through junk if you got a filth in your mind and certain things in your mind. But sometimes we just need to get in our own secret closet. Forget about who's around us. Forget about what happened and just start worshiping God right here where you are. That's where breakthrough takes place. That's where change takes place. The miracle that you want to happen on your job or in your body or in your finances, this is the part that you do together. You worship him. You worship him. They that worship him in spirit and in truth. When you worship him, God sits up on the throne and he looks at your situation and he comes to your rescue. I need God to come to my rescue today. If I have anybody in here that believes that with me today, if that's the case, can y'all just worship him? We're going to sing and we're going to get it all together, but we want to make sure that we set the atmosphere for the King of Kings. Is that all right?
somebody say, mighty are the works of God's hands. Look at somebody and say, mighty are the works of God's hands. God's hands move mountains. God's hands deliver people. God's hands is a breakthrough unto everything. I believe that mighty are the works of your hands. Can y'all help me declare that today? If you can, I believe that I got the right church at the right time. Amen. In my life, amen. Happy belated or early Thanksgiving, late Thanksgiving, amen. Everybody had it on Thursday, and you guys spent time with your family and your friends. And look at you, you made it to church this Sunday morning, amen. And I'm excited about it. I came to have church, I don't know about y'all, but I was thankful when I woke up this morning. I didn't have a doubt that the Lord that He would bring me out. I'm ready for a word on today, and I'm excited about what God is doing, amen. Amen. Can y'all help us go Pentecostal, apostolic in here just a little bit? Is that all right? And Baptist. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen and amen. God is truly worthy to be praised. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God is truly worthy to be praised. Come on. The old church will tell you to put your hands together.
sitting next to me, you ought to make some sign, and I'm excited about it, because Kendall, we could have been anywhere else, amen, God could have said, I don't want to wake you up this Sunday morning, but His grace and his mercy, 
kept us thus this far. I just don't understand how God, people can put God last when he's done so much for us. I'm excited about what he's doing and how he is. Once again, I didn't get to say it to you. Happy Thanksgiving to all of y'all. That was Thursday. It was such an amazing event. I had an awesome time, amen, with my family. Amen. I got to see my father-in-law, amen, cut a rug, amen, at 80, what is it, 86? 78. I'm trying to give him more age. Than what he my son keeps saying, Mom, Poppy's not that old, but it was a blessing to see him, amen, do a skip and a hop to some old school music, amen. It's all of us are so um, heavenly bound, amen, no earthly good, amen, amen, but it's good to have a good time, it's good to laugh, amen, and to see the joy in his eyes, and he can still remember how to dance and dance with my mother, amen, and they slow danced and they taught us a little something, something, it was a blessing that I pray to God that I am able to see that age and good health, amen, and with my significant other that we can remember each other and be able to talk about the good old days, amen, amen, how we used to praise the Lord together and how we used to do other things together. It's just good to be in his presence. Um, look at somebody and say, I'm just glad that you're here today. I'm glad you're here today. I'm excited about what God is doing and the shift that God is doing in this place. Um, God has been such a gracious God and an awesome God. When you are faithful to God, he will be faithful unto you. And I believe that me being faithful to God, even through the pandemic, along with the people that's under me, my members, God is being faithful to our house. And I believe that God is getting ready to send more and more people in if we still trust and believe that God is who he says that he is. I am so grateful for each and every one of you guys. And because of our faithfulness and our stewardship, many of you guys need to hurry up and go get your passport and your visa, amen, because Pastor Fee is going to Ghana, praise the Lord, amen, amen, we will be leaving in May the 3rd through the 10th, May the 3rd through the 10th, Pastor Fee will be in Ghana, and right after Ghana, if you cannot make that trip, we will be going to London, the end of May or the beginning of June, so you guys got enough time to make a decision on where y'all want to go, amen, to come vacation time, right? that you guys want to go and be able to spend time with your pastor to allow me um, to touch territories that I've never touched. I've always been prophesied to that I would touch nations and kingdom nation is our name and that's where we're going to nations. Is that all right? Amen. And I'm excited about it. Amen. So that is May 3rd through the 10th that we will definitely be going to travel to Ghana along with London if you cannot make it and furthermore in Gwilla. So next year in 2022, contracts are being signed and delivered. Amen. And if you got a contract that you need to sign and it need to go through, I'm telling you, if you praise him before this year is out, did y'all hear me? Before New Year's even get here and you write it and you believe it and you have faith and you claim it, I'm telling you, as soon as you walk into 2022, these contracts are already going to be approved with your name on it. And I'm trusting and believing God for that. Amen. And we're excited about what God is getting ready to do. Our pastor is also We are definitely getting ready to do Amen. A musical on um, December the 17th. That's a Friday night. December the 17th, amen. December the 17th, we're getting ready to do a musical, and we want to make sure that each and every one of you are part of that, so please be listening and looking out for that um, ahead of time. It's going to probably be 7.30, amen, and we're going to have different choirs and things to come up, amen, uh, for that event. It's all right. Y'all don't have to look so upset. It's going to be all right. Look at somebody say, the devil don't stop no show, amen. The devil don't stop no show. See, when you praise him and you touch and agree when I said those contracts getting ready to come, the devil wants to take your focus off of that. But if you believe and trust in God and you know who you are, you believe and you know who you are, that God is who he said he is. You looked at the lights and said, that's all right. My, my switch just turned back on. Look at somebody say, they don't understand it. Amen. They don't know how to praise him. My switch just turned back on. See, I could preach that. See, maybe I'm in the wrong church, but my switch just turned back on. Some of y'all lights been turned off, but God is getting ready to tell you that your light bill has just been paid and that God is getting ready to brighten up your day beyond all measures. Amen. 
I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. I believe in a praying church. Amen. And when you see the, the adversary trying to step in, all you got to do is say, not today, devil. Not today. Amen. Because we made it. Did y'all hear that song? See, I'm telling you. Every time you have a prophetic word, the devil always tries to mess up your process. But listen to me. He doesn't stop any show. Y'all remember when Fantasia was singing that song, He's Done Enough? And she told them, she said, we're not going to break no more. Amen. And they went to another part. She said, sometimes you got to get ugly for Jesus. It don't got to be perfect. The problem is we want to keep being perfect. And God said, there's no perfect man but me. But if you just worship me in spirit and in truth, I'll make sure all everything that's wrong can make it perfect. Amen. And that's what God is doing in your lives. So I'm excited about it. At this time, we want to make sure, amen, we get ready to prepare ourselves for our tithes and offering because I'm ready for a word from the Lord. Amen. I'm ready for God to do some things in my life, and I hope that you are as well. So at this time, amen, you can go ahead and get on Cash App. That's Kingdom Nation ATL. That's Kingdom Nation ATL. You can go ahead and go on Cash App at Kingdom Nation ATL. Uh, not only that, Minister Kendall and Dr. Washington is to my left, to the back. If you have a credit card, amen, that you want to be swiped, it is to the back, amen. And um, not only that, you can come up to the front, amen, and give your gifts of cash, amen, at the front. We will take that as well, amen. Also, those that are watching by live, you can go to www.kingdomnationatl.org slash give. That's kingdomnationatl.org slash give. You can go on there and give. We're asking that everyone that is able and can, that if this is not your tithe week, you can give an $80 seed. A $80 seed. If this is not your tie week, amen. If this is your tie week, you know that we give 10% of our earnings to the Lord, amen. And if you have $1,000, that's $100 that you give to the Lord, amen. Not when you give it to everything else. You give God your first fruits, amen. And you give what is due unto him because anything that is not given unto him, plus as a cheerful giver, amen. God don't want nobody that's not cheerful, amen, and giving because when you give unto the Lord, amen, he'll give back to you good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running over what God give unto your bosom and men will give unto your bosom so we want you to give as cheerful givers so once again if you are giving and this is not your tie week you can give an $80 seed amen to so cash app kingdom nation ATL kingdom nation ATL this is your tie week we want to make sure that you do that as well once again our website is www.kingdomnationatl.org slash give that's kingdomnationatl.org slash Give. Amen. Amen. At this time, Dave Gill Shank, you guys can play as we get ready to give unto the Lord.
working your favor. crooked way needs to be straight, that everything that you're asking him, your heart's desire today, that this word will fulfill your void, right where you are, thank him already for the word that's getting ready to penetrate your heart, that's getting ready to shift your atmosphere, that's getting ready to speak to your situation, somebody needs God to change something immediately today. I feel it in my spirit and God is saying, push your way to the threshold. It's about to take place. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. If you believe that God is the greatest power of your life, this is your moment and opportunity to say, God, because you are the greatest power of my life, I'm asking you now to take control. I'm asking you now to shift me on all see about little old me. If you talk to him, he'll move everybody else out of the way and he'll come see about you in the midst of your weakest hour. The tears that you shed, he hasn't overlooked it. He's right there sitting next to you. He said, all I want you to do is trust me. All I want you to do is believe in me. All I want you to do is give me this two-minute praise right here. I never left you, nor have I ever forsaken you. I'm right here in the midst of your tears. Because God is the greatest power, you will never be defeated. The enemy might have his foot on your neck right now, but baby, let me tell you something. You are not defeated. You are getting ready to break from every stronghold, every bondage, everything that the enemy is trying to throw in your face to say you're not good enough, you're not worthy, that you won't make it to the next level. God is saying you are more than a conqueror and you are about to break forward. You are about to come into praise. You are about to come into prosperity. You're about to come into healing. You're about to come into breakthrough. And all you've got to do is reach up and grab it. I'm standing right here at the door. It says, knock and the door shall be open. Somebody needs to knock on the door today and say, God, I'm here ready for you to rescue me in my weakness point of me. I'm going to give you about two more seconds and we're ready to open.
Ezekiel 37, beginning at verse number one. Deacon Cyber, go ahead and read that for me, sir. God grabbed me. I need you to say that with some power, sir. God grabbed me. Yeah, he did. God's spirit took me up and set me down in the middle of an open plain, strewn uh -huh. with bones. Strewn with what? 
with bones. All right. He led me around, and among them, a lot of bones. There were bones all over the plain, dry bones, bleached by the sun. Yeah. He said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, Master God, only you know that. He said to me, prophecy over these bones. He said what? Prophecy over these bones. So he said, speak to the bones. Dry bones. Speak to dry dead bones. Listen to the message of God. Yeah. God the master told the dry bones, watch this. I'm bringing the breath of life to you and you will come to life. I'll attach sinews to you. I'm going to put tendons back on those bones. Put meat on your bones. Uh -huh. Cover you with skin and breathe life into you. So what he's saying is that even though it looks like bones now, I'm going to bring it back to what it looked like before it died. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, brother. You'll come alive and you'll realize that I am God. Once it comes back to life, you're going to realize what? That I am God. All right. I prophesied just as I'd been commanded. As I prophesied, there was a sound and, oh, rustling. So wait a minute, hold on. God told him to do something. He did it. And what happened? There was a sound uh -huh, so and, oh, rustling. So he listened to God and God did what he said he was going to do. There was a sound. All right. And, oh, rustling. Yeah, go ahead. The bones moved and came together. Uh -huh, so what was dead started to come back to life. Bone to bone. I kept watching. Uh -huh. Sinews formed, then muscle on the bones, then skin stretched over them, but they had no breath in them. Okay, so they was they were back to life, but there was still no breath. So technically, until I get breath, I'm still dead. Keep reading, son. He said to me, prophecy to the breath. Okay, so I had you prophesy to the bones. Now the bones came back, but now I need you to prophesy to the breath. Okay, go ahead. He said to me, prophecy to the breath, prophecy, son of man, tell the breath, God the master says, come from the four winds, come breathe, breathe on these slain bodies, breathe life. So I prophesied just as he commanded me, the breath entered them and they came alive. Okay, so it's not until they got breath that they were alive, right? So so now that they've got breath, they're alive. And what happens after they come back to life? They stood up on their feet. A huge army. A huge army, okay. Then God said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Listen to what they are saying. Our bones are dried up. Yeah. Our hope is gone. Mm -hmm. There's nothing left of us. So everything that I knew of is now dead and there's nothing left of me, but keep reading. Therefore, prophecy, tell them, God the Master says, I'll dig up your graves and bring you out alive. Uh-huh, so I'm going to bring you back to life. Oh, my people. Uh-huh. Then I'll tell you straight to the land of Israel. When I dig up graves and bring you out as my people, you'll realize that I am God. I'll breathe my life into you and you'll live. Then I'll lead you straight back to your land and you'll realize that I am God. I've said it and I'll do it. God's decree. Read that last line right there again for me. I've said it and I'll do it. God's decree. Uh -huh. Read it one more time because I don't think they caught it. What do you say? I've said it. I said it. And I'll do it. So that means if I said it, I'm going to do what I say. And my, this is God's <laughs> decree. My word don't come back to me void. One more time. Read it again. I've said it. I've said it. And I'll do it. And I'll do it. God's decree. I've got to do it because I said I'll do it. My word is bond. And I'm not a God that lies. Man, y'all can be seated in here. Amen. For a few moments, I just want to use as a subject, it's not over yet. It ain't over yet. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. One of the most arduous feelings in the world is the feeling of defeat. 
Defeat may be easy to accept for somebody who's never accomplished anything before. But it hits different when you've had the opportunity to sit in the winner's circle. It hits different when you have experienced the feeling of accomplishment. It, defeat hits different once you have experienced success. Once you've been on top, only to fall to the bottom and have to start all over again. When dealing with defeat, you can look at it from two different perspectives. You can look at defeat as a place, or you can look at defeat as a path. Defeat by definition means a frustration by nullification or by prevention of success. That's what defeat is. You get frustrated because your success has been nullified or something is preventing you from being successful. So once again, when I look at defeat, I can look at it as a place or I can look at it as a path. If I'm looking at it as a place, it's somewhere that you can remain. It's somewhere you can be comfortable. It's, it's a place that you don't think you can overcome. But if I look at defeat as a path, I see it as somewhere I had to stop along my journey. Even though I'm there, I don't take up residence there because I understand I won't be there for much longer. So I see defeat as nothing more than a pit stop on my way to my promise. Some people look at it as a place. They start dwelling there and they think that they can't make it there. But there are some people who look at it as a pathway to get to where God is calling them to be. So when I look at somebody in the Bible like Joseph... A man who was hated on by his brothers, a, a man who was thrown into a pit, a man who was sold into slavery, a man who was thrown into jail because of lies. And even after all that, he could have remained in a place of defeat, but he understood and he trusted God. And because he did so, he ended up second in command of all of Egypt. I'm looking at a man by the name of Job and he had everything he could ever want in life. And in a matter of moments, he lost everything he had. His own wife told him, curse God and die. His friends accused him of doing wrong. He was eventually restored. And not only did he get back what he lost, God gave him double for his trouble. He could have remained in a place of defeat. But because he understood and he knew the God that he served, he came out of defeat and he understood that it was just a pathway to get to what God had for him. I can look at Joseph and I can look at Job and I can't look at those two without another J. And I got to look at a man by the name of Jesus who, who was falsely accused and a man who was beat, a man who was spit on, a, a man who was crucified, a man who was put into a tomb, which could have been his end, which could have signified his defeat. But, but three days later, he, he got back up and he beat defeat because he understood that his grave was only a pit stop to the promise that God had for us. So is defeat a place for you or is defeat a path for you? Are you dwelling there or are you understanding that it's just a place I have to stop in order to get to my promise? And here's where we find the, the people of Israel in today's scripture because they're now in a state of defeat. Look what they had to overcome before they even got defeated. They, they overcame obstacles. They overcame, uh, uh, they overcame being slaves in Egypt. You you got to understand the history of the Israelites because Jacob and his family, they went to Egypt in order to survive a plague. And while they were there, they grew in numbers and the Pharaoh started hating on them because of their large presence. And they went into slavery, but they had to come around. They had to come out of slavery. And once they came out of slavery, they had to wander around in a wilderness for 40 years to get to a place that should have taken them two weeks to get to. So they overcame slavery. They they overcame wilderness. They, they overcame the loss of Moses. And after all of that, they finally get to their promise. They, they finally get to the place that God guaranteed them. They, they finally get to the place that they had, that God had for them. And they begin living in the promise only to have it snatched away. Only to have it snatched away because they were raided and their people were taken captive and their temple was destroyed and their wall was destroyed. So now they're at a place that it seems like I'm back where I started. 
Has anybody ever had that situation? You feel like you're back where you started. You've been at the pinnacle. You've made it to the top. You've tasted success only to have it snatched away from you. That's where they are right now. They, they understood what it meant to be slaves. They, they understood what it meant to get free. They, they understood what it meant to taste God's promise only to have it snatched away. And now they're back where they start. They're defeated. It don't look good. I'm struggling with this because I, why would God allow me to taste what he has for me? Why would God allow me to get to the place of my promise only to put me back down to the bottom? And that's where we find Ezekiel. That's where we find Ezekiel today because God had to grab him and show him in a vision what I can do. I know that you've been at the top. I know that you've struggled. I know it's been hard for you to finally get to the place where you were supposed to be. And now you're back to a place where it seems like I no longer have my hand on you. Has anybody ever been there where you feel like God's hand has been removed from your life? So now we're in this vision. We're in this vision of a valley of dry bones. We're, we're in a place now that it feels like there's death all around. The text says, God grabbed me talking about Ezekiel God had to grab him out of his reality and put him in a vision God he grabbed me and he put me in the valley of dry bones the, the, the thing that I love about God is that if he's grabbing me that means his hand is still on me if he grabbed me that means he hasn't taken his hand off of me no matter how bad my situation may seem if he grabbed me that means he hadn't forgotten about me and it said that the spirit took me up and it set me down in the middle of an open plain strewn with dry bones. He, he leads me among these dry bones. And what I'm looking at Ezekiel, what Ezekiel's looking at is he's looking at a lot of bones. He, he's looking at bones that are all over this plain. Dry bones bleached by the sun. So he took me to a place or he takes Ezekiel to a place without any sign of life. And it's evident that whatever has been there has been dead a long time because the text says the bones were dry and they were bleached by the sun. The fact that he's looking at bones and not bodies indicates that whatever was there has been there long enough to decompose. So he's in a valley full of death and whatever is dead, it's been there a long time. But one of the things that as I've read this text that strikes me as odd is it doesn't mention that the bones were buried. Uh -huh. It doesn't mention that the bones were buried. Uh, I know in biblical times that they don't bury like we bury today. They, they, put, they didn't put the bodies in the ground. They, they put them in the tombs. But this text doesn't mention any motion of a tomb. Ain't no tombs. It's just bones. Revelation for somebody, although it looks dead, don't bury it just yet. Because you got to understand that even though it's dead, even though it looks dead, even though it looks hopeless, God is saying, don't you bury it just yet because there's some things I can bring back to life. I don't care how long it's been down. I don't care how bad it seems. I don't care how bleached these bones are. Don't you bury that thing just yet because if I put my hand on it, because if I put my hand on it, I guarantee you it'll look as pretty as it did before it died. You better look at somebody and tell them, don't bury it just yet. Don't, don't, don't bury it just yet. So God allows Ezekiel to walk around these bones and he has to take an inventory of his surroundings so that Ezekiel can recognize exactly where he is. So if I desire my situation to change, the first thing I got to do is recognize where I am. If I want something to change, I have to come to grips with my reality. And my reality is, this is where I'm at. And not only do I recognize where I'm at, I've got to ask myself a question. How did I contribute to get to where I am? What did I do to get to where I am? What, what role did I play? 
to get to where I am. See, that's the part of the story that we don't like to read. That, that's the page we like to skip over in our life because some of us are not where we are because God had anything to do with it. We are where we are because we're reaping what we have sown. So what did I do to contribute to where I am? Understand where, what, what did Israel do to contribute to where they are? They could have stayed where they were. They could have stayed in the promise. They could have stayed living in God's promise. But because of what they did, it was snatched away from them and they had to start all over again. It was their disobedience that got them where they are. It was their idols that got them where they are. It was their lack of respect for God that got them where they are. And you can't complain about where you are when you refuse to put God first. So now Ezekiel has taken an inventory of where I am. I, I'm looking at the bones of my army. I'm looking at the bones of Israel. I'm looking at what we are looking like now and it doesn't look like what God said we should have. Can I tell you that sometimes what you see doesn't match what God has said? So now Ezekiel's taking this inventory of all these bones, and God asked him, Son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, Master God, only, only you know that one. So he's saying that uh, they could live, but I know that I can't make them come to life by myself. I, I know that they can live again, but God, I'm going to have to put this in your hands because my hands aren't big enough. My hands aren't anointed enough to make this thing happen. And that's somebody's word for the day. It can live again, but you got to put it in God's hands. It can live again, but you got to take your hand off of it. It can live again, but you've got to give it to God so that God can work it out. It can live again. Son of man, can these bones live? Master God only... Only you know that. I, I don't have the power to make it live, but, but God, you can. So God says to him, what I need you to do is I need you to prophesy over the bones. And then he commands the bones to listen to the message of God. So Ezekiel, what I need you to do is I need you to speak life over death. What I need you to do, Ezekiel, is I need you to speak to the thing that's dead. I didn't say what I was going to do. Watch this. He told him to speak to it. He never told him what the end result was going to be. So all I need you to do is speak. So sometimes in order to make that dead thing rise again, what we need to do is learn how to follow God's direction. Stop being so inquisitive. Stop asking so many questions. Stop trying to get ahead of ourselves and just let God do what he do. I just told you to speak to him. So Ezekiel, he follows instructions and he speaks to the bones. He speaks life over what's dead. Luke 10 and 19 tells me that I've got the power to tread over serpents. I've got the power to tread over scorpions. And I've got power over the enemy. So if my thing is dead and I've got the power to step on serpents, if I've got the power to step on scorpions, if I've got power over the enemy, surely I got enough power to bring my dead thing back to life. Surely I got enough in me if I'm supposed to be able to heal the sick, if I'm supposed to be able to make the blind see, if I'm supposed to be able to make the lame walk, surely I can pull myself out of the situation that I am as long as I got God on my side. As long as I got him on my side. I should be able to do anything because life and death is in the power of the tongue. So what I want to do is I want to pull on the life that's in my tongue and I want to be able to bring my dead thing back. But I've got to put it in God's hands and I've got to learn how to do what God says and I've got to learn how to work on God's timing. So now that God told me to speak, I'm speaking and I'm putting it in his hands that he's going to do the very thing that I speak. So now that I speak it, verse number five and six says, God the master told the bones. Wait a minute. Hold on. I spoke it. But verse five says God told the bones. So, so when I speak it, God takes my words and he throws it into the atmosphere so that what I speak can manifest. Uh, I wish y'all was with me this morning. So it said God the master told the bones. Watch this. 
I'm bringing the breath of life to you and you'll come to life. I'm going to attach sinews to you. I'm, I'm putting meat on your bones. I'm, I'm covering you with skin and, and I'm breathing life into you and you're going to come alive again. And when you come alive, you're going to realize that I'm God. So what he's saying is, I'm going to make it look the way it looked before it died. Even though it was pretty and even though it was beautiful and it may have been successful and now it looks like dead and now it looks like death and now it looks like it's been sitting in the sun for a while. God says, because you spoke it, because you listened to me, because you obeyed my command and you prophesied the way I told you to prophesy. He says, I'm about to bring that very thing which you spoke to back to life. I'm going to make it look like it did before it died. I'm, I'm going to give it the beauty that it once had. So, so now Ezekiel is listening to God and he speaks the word and God takes the word and God distributes the word to the bones and the bones then react to the word and they become together. Yeah, he, he, he prophesied to him and verse number seven and eight said, I prophesied. This is Ezekiel. I, I prophesied just as God commanded me and as I prophesied, there, there was this rustling sound. The, the, the bones became, they, they, they began to move and they came together bone to bone. I kept watching the bones and as I kept watching, I kept seeing them form and I saw sinews form. I, I saw muscles form. I, I saw skin stretch over the bones, but they still didn't have no breath in them. So what Ezekiel is saying is, as I spoke, and once God took my words and distributed my words to where they needed it to go, I then began to see what I speak manifest. I began to see the very words that I spoke. I began to see it manifest right before my own eyes. He, he says that as I stood there and as I prophesied, there was a rustling of bones. The bones came together. So what Ezekiel is saying is, as I sat there and as I watched my words manifest, I saw the foot bone get connected to the leg bone. And as I sat there and watched my words manifest, I saw the leg bone get connected to the knee bone. And once I sat there and watched my words manifest, I saw the knee bone connect to the, the thigh bone. And I, I saw the thigh bone connect to the, to the back bone. And I saw the back bone connect to the hip bone. And I saw the hip bone connect to the neck bone. And I saw the neck bone connect to the head bone. And all of a sudden, what I saw in front of me, there was an army standing before me. There was an army standing before me. It, it looks like the army of Israel. It looks like the army used to look before we got defeated. But there's still a problem because these bones, which are now skeletons and which has now become a body, ain't breathing yet. It ain't breathing yet. So, so I still got a problem because now that it looks like what it used to look like, it ain't acting like what it used to act like. So now he said, prophesy to the breath. He, he says, prophesy to the breath, son of man, and tell the breath, God the master says, come from the four winds. Come from the four winds. Breathe on the slain bodies. I, I need you to breathe life. So Ezekiel says in verse number 10, so I prophesied again, just as God told me to. And I breathed and I prophesied just as God told me to. And the breath entered into them and they came alive. So once again, I was mature enough. I was spiritually mature enough to follow God's instruction. I was mature enough to begin to do the thing God told me to do. And once again, God took my words. And once again, God distributed my words where they needed to go. And now all of a sudden, the army that was standing there without breath is now back to life. It's now back to life. It now has the life that it once had. It now is doing the very thing that it's supposed to do. And in verse number 12, it said, prophesy to them. Tell them, God the master says, I'm going to dig you up out of the graves and bring you back to life. Because
because you are my people, then I'm going to take you straight to the land of Israel. I'm going to take you straight to the very thing that you lost. I'm going to take you back to the very thing that you could have had. I'm going to take you back to the very thing that looked the way it looked before it died. Oh, my people, then I'll take you straight to the land of Israel. When I dig up the grave and bring you out as my people, you're going to realize I'm God. So once I do this thing for you, once I make it come back to life, once I turn your situation around, you're going to realize the God that you serve. You're going to realize that I'm God. You're going to realize that I've never left you. You're going to realize that I never took my hand off you. Once you see this back, once you see it come back to life, you're going to realize that I'm God. He said, I'm digging up the graves. And he said, I'm bringing you out. That's a word for somebody right there. I don't know how long you've been, but God said, I'm about to bring you out. I'm about to bring you out of your struggle. I'm about to bring you out of your sickness. I'm about to bring you out of the thing that has had you bound. I'm about to bring you out of the thing that you thought you couldn't defeat. I'm going to show you that I'm God and I'm about to bring you out. Then he said, I'm going to bring the life to you. So not only am I going to bring you out, I'm going to give you my breath. I'm going to give you the very breath that I gave Adam. I'm going to give you the very breath that started life. I'm going to give you the very breath that started man. I'm going to give you the very breath that you need to have inside of you to be successful. I'm going to put myself inside of you. And then once I do that, I'm going to take you straight back to the land. And I've said it. I got to do it. Good morning, Kingdom Nation. I'm gone. But if God said it, I'm going to do it. If God said it, he's going to do it. And I don't know who needs to believe that today. Because somebody in here is frustrated. You may be online. You may be in the room. But somebody needs to understand that if God said it, he's going to do it. So many of us have given up on God. We think that our situation can't be changed. We think that we're stuck. We think that defeat is our home. We think that defeat is a place where we got to stay. But God said, if I said it, I'm going to do it. If he promised Kingdom Nation a building, he's going to do it. If he promised me some money, he's going to do it. If he prophesied to me in the past, he's going to do it. If he said he was going to restore my relationship, he's got to do it. You better stop giving up on God. You better stop dwelling in a place that looks bad, even though it may look bad. Even though it may seem like it has no life left. I'm trying to tell somebody that this morning, whatever it is that I told you to put in the atmosphere, that very thing, those very things, they got to come to pass because God said it. We're going to do it. Amen. Come on, give Minister Kendall some love, everybody. Amen. If you believe God's going to do it, can you come on and give God some praise all over this atmosphere? Amen. Because he is an able God. Look at somebody say, I believe that he's able.
God promised for me it is and it shall come to pass. And right now we're going to open the doors of the church at this moment that anyone needs prayer, anyone who wants to rededicate their lives to God, anyone needs some things uh, for God to do for you and through you. This is your time and your opportunity if you want to join Kingdom Nation. Amen. At this time you are so welcome to do so. Amen. I'm grateful. Amen. For each and every one of you that came to see God this morning. Let somebody say I'm grateful to see you. Somebody give me the time. It's 2 15. My career is just Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. To this awesome young lady that's on this row right here. Um, can you give me your name, sweetheart? You right here. Yes, ma'am. Shaquita. Everybody say, hey, Shaquita. Amen. Sister Shaquita, I was watching you during praise and worship. As I, God was ministering through me, and as God was um, talking through me as I was singing on the second song we were singing, um, it's over, it's finished, and you made it. Um, God told me to tell you that the situation that you were in, the situation that you feel that can't get any better, even through your prayers of your family, that God is saying it's finished, it's over. You don't have to lay awake at night anymore. You don't have to be frustrated. He says, listen to the voice of the Lord as Minister Kendall was speaking on today. He said, those dry bones are now about to live. And what you have prayed for is getting ready to manifest. Can somebody give her some tissue, please? I saw, I saw your heart. See, this is the reason why coming to church, you can't be in your own agenda. You have to allow God to do what he do because there are really people that's really coming through a breakthrough and you just came because you tired. But they might not have nowhere to live tomorrow. And we take so many things for granted. And God told me to tell you today that it's over. It's finished. That your footsteps have been ordered from the Lord. You don't even have. Who, how are you related to her? That's your daughter. I knew it was. I knew it was. And I even came to tell you before I even knew that that was, that was your daughter. God told me to tell you that your prayers for her have not been unheard. That she had to make some rumps and bruises and some rights and some lifts for her to not listen to herself, but to listen to the voice of God. So he says, Mommy, it's all well. It's a lining up in the right time, in the right place. Sometimes us as children, even when we're grown, we still make decisions because we're grown. But yet still we have people that pray for us behind the scenes. He says, your prayers have not been overlooked. That I've heard your voice for your daughter and she will be well. He's restoring her mind capacity. He's restoring her strength. He's restoring her health. He's even restoring her sons. That even the situation that we know about, he's turning that around, but that's only the distraction of the enemy because he's trying to get her attention. He says, so don't cry so much. It's already taken care of. He said, you have now, since you came today, have been plucked out of the enemy's hand and God is getting ready to reward you for what you've been praying for. Can, uh, Mr. Kendall or Dr. Washington, uh, since you're a lady, can you just come lay your hand on her really quickly, on her shoulder? I remove every burden. Can y'all help me really quickly? I remove every burden, every weight that you are carrying. Even in your personal life, you pray for more for other people than you do yourself. I'm restoring health back into your body, God says. He says, take upon this yoke for my yoke is light. He's taking off every yoke off of your shoulder. And he says, you have carried them long enough. Now it's my time. So I speak life back into you. I speak restoration back into you. I speak power back into you. Speak the joy of the Lord back into you. That your sleepless nights will now become nights of peace as you sleep. Your family will be taken care of. God, restore every brokenness that she feels. And give her what she has been praying for and asking for. God, I see the order of the footsteps that she is walking in the path of your glory. God says this is not... 
This is just the beginning. Your age may seem that you're older, but that's just because you're wiser. And now it's time for your legacy to live on and go through your family. And it will be so. Don't stress so hard. Can y'all give God praise for what God is going to do? What he is doing and where he's taking her. You don't have to cry. Say you don't gotta cry no more. It's gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright. You never know what somebody goes through on a day-to-day -day basis. You never know when somebody's at the edge of their last layer, and you don't know that a good morning, a hug, a how you doing can change somebody's life instantly. Why doesn't pay to be ugly? They could have tried to commit suicide last night and you just sent them over the edge that quick. But when you come to worship God in spirit and in truth and every agenda is left behind, he'll give you a discerning spirit to know when somebody needs just a hug today. And you've been pulling on my spirit all day, even when Minister Kendall was preaching. And he said, all is well, sweetheart. <laughs> Amen. This young lady, I already know who she is. I'm waiting on her to walk down the aisle. Amen. And I talk to her uh, on Messenger often, by text message often. Amen. And um, I saw you call last night. And when you called, I just started praying. Because the decision that you needed to make, I wanted you to make it on your own. I believe that God has a gift in you. God is waiting for you to make the step to do what God has called you to do. Don't wait on other people because they might never change. But you might be the voice for your sons. If they don't see you fighting in that, they'll never come to that. If you want things to change in your household, they have to see change. And in order for them to do, you might be the only example that they trust. But if you want it to turn around, you got to bring them in so that they can see a new environment. And I believe that you're the key in the vessel. If you just do what God tells you to do, it'll work out. Like I told mom, it'll work out. So many times we try to make ourselves God, but God's already figured it out. It's just not moving faster than we want it to move. I'm a witness to that. I want God to move now. He said, I can't move.
Just like Jonah, you can run, but you can't hide. So do what God call you to do. You know where you're supposed to be at. bringing them into the church. Next year, we're doing a vaccine for this generation. I'm calling every street kid from all ages. I want them to be in the house of the Lord because I don't believe that this generation is nothing. I believe that there are some good in everybody. And if ain't nobody else believe from Pastor Fee, gonna believe in them. From every dope boy, from every weed smoker, from every alcoholic, from every prostitute, they gonna be right here in Kingdom Nation. And you know what God gonna do? He gonna turn the situation around, and he gonna turn it around. It might not happen overnight. It might not happen next week, but I promise you, you love somebody enough, you'll see change. So y'all get ready. Amen. 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 Can we give God praise?